that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering by the gospel of God. Notice the next purpose statement. That the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. My friend, the first purpose of the Gentiles being part of Christ's church is so that we could be sanctified. Sanctification. Sanctification. You know, sometimes I think that we have the attitude, hey, don't call that which God has cleansed common or unclean. Everything that I am, the way, this is who I am. God saved me the way that I am. And so I get to be the way that I am. No, my friend, God calls us to sanctification. Sanctification is a word that emphasizes holiness, cleanliness. Called to cleansing. Called to cleanliness. You know, what's the first thing God wants for a person who is born again by the grace of God? He wants them to clean up. He wants them to clean up. He wants to change their lives. He wants to emphasize holiness. You know, this is kind of a little bit of a poke or a jab to the Gentiles that say, well, we can, you know, we can do this or we can do that because we're not Jewish. To say, well, you know, you may not be Jewish, but how about cleaning it up a little bit? God's called us to sanctification. You know, I think sanctification is, is too little preached nowadays. It's amazing how much we debate things that are so far away from any concept of sanctification. It's really, it really saddens me today to recognize that believers have questions about whether or not strong drink, whether or not God's against it. It's amazing today. It's amazing that literally individuals who name the name of Jesus Christ even think that it's okay to drink alcohol at all. It's, it's just surprising to me. It's, it's amazing. Because the Bible says wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. The Bible says who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath babblings, who hath wounds without cause. Who have the redness of eyes, who have wounds without cause. Uh, they that what? They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. And yet today, my friend, believers in Jesus, individuals that name the name of Christ, and by the way, I'm not debating their salvation this morning. I'm not questioning that this morning. I'm simply saying they don't understand the call of the Gentiles to sanctification. Believers behave like the world when it comes to fornication, when it comes to personal sanctification. The way we look, the way that we act, the things that we listen to, the things that we put through our minds, the, th the way that we dress, the th things that we involve ourselves in and with. My friend, why did God save Gentiles? God saved Gentiles so they could be sanctified. And we need to exercise, we need to exemplify sanctification. You know, it's not a terrible thing when somebody calls me. It doesn't offend me at all. When somebody calls and says, Pastor, what's the dress code? for Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church. Now, we chuckle and we think, well, we don't have a dress code. Don't tell somebody how to dress. We wouldn't dream of telling somebody how to dress. But you know, I'm kind of glad that somebody might feel like there is a dress code here. You, you see where I'm getting at? It's not because the way you dress sanctifies you. But you know, it'd be kind of good if people had an impression that, you know, there might be a little bit something to the way a Christian ought to dress. Based on what we see from those people dressing. You know, go to most... Churches, and it's embarrassing to me. I'll be honest with you. I go to churches, and I, I, I just feel like I don't want to talk to or shake hands with any woman here. It's just embarrassing even look at them the way they dress. It's embarrassing. Because there's no sanctification. There's no concept of where the Christians look like they're, like they're going out to club and pick up, pick up men and uh, girls and guys. The way they dress sometimes. I'm not a ranter about dresses. I don't think that... I don't think that this is one of the things that per proves personal holiness, but I think sanctification affects how we dress, isn't so? Mm -hmm. We're called to sanctification. The whole movies thing, that's, that's, we've lost it. We lost the debate on it. You, when I was a kid, if you went to the movies in our church, you didn't tell anybody. Because there are people who think badly of you because you went to the movies. You know why they think bad of you because you went to the movies? Because of what's in the movies. It's garbage. Isn't it so? Anybody here remember when it used to be a bad thing to go to the movies? It's amazing to me that there's no debate about it today. Christians just all go. Ratings don't mean anything. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Today it's it's astonishing to me. You know what you think of somebody that would even say from the from like I am publicly today that a Christian oughtn't to go to the movies. And you ought to go to the movies. It's amazing. It's, it's a debate. You know, before the movies, the debate was theater. 
Today, to say that there's anything wrong in theater is just boggles people's mind. But you know, theater has some pretty wicked associations. The mindset of it. I'm not ranting about these things. I'm not saying I never watched anything on TV. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just simply saying that this concept of sanctification is what the Gentiles are called to, and we don't really get it very much. That's all. The Gentiles are called to sanctification and to holiness, the Bible says. So what's the purpose of the Gentiles? What did God save the Gentiles for? Well, I'll tell you something. For a Gentile to going from being a swine in the ditch to sanctify is a rather marvelous thing for the testimony of the grace of Jesus Christ. 